My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. Hello again folks, welcome to round three of the Hyundai Construction Equipment British Sidecar Championship. We're here at Snetterton on the 300 circuit, another one of those brilliant tracks under the Motorsport Vision banner. This is a track that's going to sort out the 1000cc and the 600cc differential. Having said that, the 600s are pushing the pole position man Steve Kershaw very, very quickly. He's also leading the table, but there's a 600 right up his tail. Kershaw took his first victory at the previous round at Alton Park. 61 points, what a massive lead already. That 600 of Todd Edison, Charlie Richardson in second. Phil Bell on another big bike. Rupert Archer, Big Suzuki. Founds is not here, either of them. Or the Birchalls. Between the TT and uh, World Duty, they found it too much to come to Snetterton. So Todd Ellis there, second fastest he qualified. And in race one, it was a 12-lapper. Steve Kershaw, a magnificent pole. He and Stuart Clark, nearly two seconds faster than the rest of the field. And when the lights went out, Todd Ellis on the 600 got an absolutely cracking start, as indeed did Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwell. But on the left of your picture, Phil Bell and Stuart Ramsey on the Marin Motorsport Kawasaki slotted into third behind Todd Ellis and Charlie Richardson on the Molson Santander Salt Honda. Bell went past on sheer power on the straight, and this is always going to be the case here at Snetterton on this 2.97 mile circuit. The big bikes have got the grunt, and here you've got big bike playing little bike with number seven, Brian Gray and Jason Pitt, underneath Nev Jones and Rob Child. Briefly out of the action was Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz. Whether it was terminal or not, you will find out. Phil Bell then had this race-long tussle with Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson on the Honda CBR. Ellis tended to nip through on the bends, doing it on braking, carrying much higher corner speed. But when Phil Bell put the hammer down on the straights, that big Kawasaki came into its own. And all that hard work for Ellis and Richardson would appear to have been in vain. But not always. They kept fighting back. And also, Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood on their 600 Kawasaki were nibbling at the back end of Phil Bell and Stuart Ramsey. This three-way fight raged pretty much all race long with the big bike getting the advantage in a straight line and Ellis and Richardson themselves becoming embroiled in a 600 scrap. Martin Kirk and Shelley Smithers retired from the action for a bit of pit lane servicing. At this moment in time though, Steve Kershaw's advantage seven seconds. He and Stuart Clark were charging away at the head of the pack and this, the battle for runner-up spot, raged. Ellis at this point was in fourth. Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole then became embroiled in a scrap with Brian Gray and Jason Pitt. Stevens got the better of Todd Ellis, but swapping paint all the way through the race. On the inside, it was Stevens again. On the outside, it was Ellis. Two wheels on the grass, it might have been. And look at that, got it all squirrely. Through went Ricky Stevens. He took advantage of that. The flame-spitting Honda fought back, though, underneath at the next bend. Back again went Stevens. It was a terrific, terrific race for the entire 12 laps. It would come all the way down to the wire, as you will see. 
Simon Gilbert and Jack Tredden ran out of fuel. Afterwards, he said, I put 18 litres in, not enough. Over the line they go. Kershaw and Clark took victory, but this battle went all the way to the flag. Nipping through ahead of Stevens, it was Todd Ellis and Richardson, and they held it by half a bike length at the line to claim third place on the podium. But the race winners, Kershaw and Clark, second victory in a row, and they march on up the table at the top. There it is then, confirmed. 18 and a half seconds the gap over Phil Bell. So two big bikes at the top of the race. Ellison Stevens, Gary Bryan with a severed finger on his right hand. A brave, brave performance in fifth ahead of Gary Horsepole. Further down the order, Craig Lambert, Julie Canaper on the only short bike in the race, getting 12th. You can see there Rob Biggs and Jerome Schmitz credited with last place. With a reverse grid format, it's going to be really fascinating. This is possibly the first pole position for Nev Jones and Rob Child carrying the number 75. They've got a big engine in there and they're going to have to use it to get off the line. Behind them, Brian Gray and Jason Pitt on the 600. Brian Gray power biking Yamaha. Number 111, Kevin Cable and Guy Palsy lineup, second fastest. Over there, number 11, we've got Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole. He was going well in the first race. Gary Horsepole's there, further back. The championship leaders and winners of race one, Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark, are down in 10th. They were really looking forward to this race, I know, as indeed am I. Sit back and enjoy. And it's the 10 lapper, bang in the middle of race Sunday here at Snetterton. A huge crowd at this round of BSB. Round four for the solos, round three for the sidecars. And the people just love the entertainment here on this Snetterton 300 track, 2.97 miles. So there's going to be a fair amount of racing going on. Nev Jones on the front there with Kev Cable. Those boys are going to have to get those big engines off the line and go really quickly. Brian Gray got his nose out. There you can see Phil Bell. We're on board with Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark scything up the inside towards the first right hand of Riches. Round they go. Everyone round safely. A big grid here. Oh, a spinner off. I said everyone safely. Not so at all. That's Greg Lambert and Julie Canaper on the only short bike in the race. Nearly tipping it over, but they've rejoined on board with Bell and Stuart Ramsey. The Marin Motorsport Kawasaki took a little kiss there, but uh, Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson on the 600 slotted on the inside of them. It's Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, number 68. Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde lead back from two very successful Isle of Man TT outings. Look at Kershaw in the middle of the action, cutting across the front of Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson on the Santander Salt Honda. Over to the left, Kershaw goes. Another one, that's Dean Nichols. He's gone past. So now Kershaw, Todd Ellis is going with him. Underneath Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole. And there, Phil Bell having a look, but there wasn't room, gave him a kiss. Dean Nichols is going very well this weekend. The man from Somerset. There, Kevin Cable ahead of Nev Jones. These boys are really holding their own, but they've got fast traffic behind. Here comes Kershaw. Kershaw and Clark on the express tyre. Molson, Santander, Salt, Kawasaki out of the slipstream and not quite past Kevin Cable. Fair play, Kevin Cable. Todd Ellis going through with them ahead of Nev Jones. It is brilliant, brilliant stuff. There you can see Kevin Cable, then Kershaw is past him. 1-1-1, one, one, one. Guy Palsy doing the business, holding down. He's rough. really impressed, Kevin. You are riding well. Nev Jones similarly absolutely flying. Phil Bell, Stuart Ramsey watching Kershaw get away, and they don't want that. They have... They came here four points adrift of second place in the championship. And now Rupert Archer. Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant going past Martin Kirk and Shelley Smith is Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood on board. So much is happening. It's breathless, breathless stuff. Number seven, Brian Gray and Jason Pitt. 
with Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood on the Quattro Plant JT Speed Pit Kawasaki right behind them. We're on board with it now. Are we going underneath Brian Gray? Yes, we are. There's Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant. Look how the passenger works. Bryant Finn. In this league, he's performing well. Out to the left-hander. Brian Gray, the veteran Brian Gray from High Wycombe, knows how to get three wheels around a racetrack. Grand Prix campaigner for many, many years and still loves his racing every bit as much as he ever did. Gary Horsepole, Jimmy Connell there, number 32. Number seven, the 600cc R6 Yamaha of Brian Gray, power biking with Martin Kirk and Shelley Smithies going underneath, not quite. Brian Gray slow into the corner, but then got the drive on. Look at Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde. They're out there at the front. Kershaw and Clark are right behind them. But Gary Bryan riding with a severely injured right hand. You wouldn't believe it. A ride-on lawnmower accident. He grabbed the deck, took his index finger off at the second knuckle and the top of his middle finger. So, and, and that was only a matter of weeks before the TT. He went to the Isle of Man and rode in the TT with a damaged hand and he's having a problem here steering it. These big flat tyres grip the ground so much he was in severe pain in qualifying but we have a new race leader out in front then. It's Kershaw and Clark on board with Rupert Archer. Oh a kiss from Martin Kirk, a hand up and a shake of the head from Rupert Archer. What did you do that for? He said, well, sorry, said Kirky, didn't mean to do it. Brilliant stuff. Kevin Cable and Nev Jones, 111 and 75, have really stuck together through this, but there, Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood going underneath Nev Jones on the 600. So they are now the little bike in the big bike bread, if you like. They're the filling in the sandwich. But Nev Jones and Rob Child acquitting themselves brilliantly in this race. Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant, number 70 on the Adolf RS bike in there lurking. Stevens then has gone underneath and that's one more place as they move further up the order. So Kevin Cable and Guy Palsy relegated. Rupert Archer, Tom Bryant on the Adolf RS and now Phil Bell on the Marin Motorsports Kawasaki right behind Gary Bryant and Phil Hyde and through they go. Even though Gary Bryan's on a big bike, Phil Bell now up to second. But what a brave ride by Gary Bryan and Phil Bell. Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole on board. The guys from Highbridge, and I stand corrected because I once said they were from Devon. He told me no in certain terms. I'm from Somerset. So we now know he's from Somerset. I was thinking something else down in Devon. Never mind. Can't get it right all the time. Brian Gray right there now on board with archer the nose of that fairing just wiggling in the wind brian gray alongside him so these two at it hammer and tongs it is rupert archer on the grass no brian gray does not give it another shake of the head from rupert archer he's getting all sorts of action here but his big suzuki powers past the 600 up the straight he's lining up then dean nichols Rupert Archer has got Dean Nichols in his sights. Matt McLaurin and A.D. Hope there, and A.D. Hope riding with an injured hand after surgery, and he's been struggling on the Blue Machinery bike. Kirk and Smith is a bit of a spin. Martin Kirk has been riding well all weekend, so a touch of over-exuberance. You can see the black line. Let's have a look. Bit hot on the brakes, and round she goes. Andy Peach and Ken Edwards miss them, fortunately, as indeed does everyone else as Rob Beeks goes through. Now, Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant. This is two big bikes playing together. Has Archer's Suzuki got the power in a straight line to go past Dean Nichols? Dean Nichols there, yes, does it going into the bend. Can he fight back? Dean Nichols loves his racing, real family affair. Smiles always around the Dean Nichols awning. Good to see people enjoying their sport and tell you what, here at Snetterton, everybody is enjoying the sport. Look at that, Rupert Archer then shoots past. So that's Kevin Cable and Guy Pawsey now have been pushed back by Rupert Archer who's making fantastic progress up the order.
Todd Ellis, Charlie Richardson going round the outside of Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde, and it's fair to say that he must be in a fair amount of pain now, Gary Bryan. Oh, up goes the hand, there you have it. He told me that when he's on full lock, the handlebars in his injured hand is hitting the front tyre, so that can't be good. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood making progress as well alongside Simon Gilbert and Jack Tritton who expired with a lack of fuel in the first race. I hope they put 25 litres in this time round. They only put 18 in for race one. Not enough petrol. We need petrol to get round here. And these big straights and the big engines gobble it up. Gilbert using a Yamaha and we are now on the back of Gary Horsepole and Jimmy Connell. Horsepole's been going well too, but he's got a big engine, so Ricky Stevens is going to have to do it through the twisty bits. Simon Gilbert there lurking as well. I must say, I'm, I'm surprised how quick these 600s are on a big fast track like this at Snetterton. So the decision to go 600 obviously the correct way and the decision has been taken that for 2019 it will be only 600 cc's in this british championship so this is the last season of 1000 cc power so make the most of it boys you're all going to be level pegging from 2019 onwards gary horsepole and james connell making that pilgrimage from scotland every single round Lovely guy and a great passenger. But Ricky Stevens then right on the back like a hungry dog. And that hungry dog is going through on the inside and he does it on quarter speed. Flicks the back round, throws it round and gets the power down. A good block pass. Gary Horsepole had nowhere to go. And Stevens and Charwood are now up to fourth place. Fourth place then, three quarters distance. Lap seven of ten. Horsepole coming back on power. Not quite. Camera angle belied that. It looked as though he was there, but not quite. What a fantastic race this is. Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood on that quattro plant. JG Speedfit, Kawasaki. The big fear, of course, from the big engines is that in recent months we've had a spate of blow ups and. Uh, some of these Yamahas are 10 years old because they use the 2008 engine and not the Big Bang. So if you're riding a Yamaha, as indeed Simon Gilbert is in the back of the picture, the engine is 10 years old. So I rest my case. Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant. Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole having a good look at the inside of Brian Gray. Brian Gray has not given up. They've, they've had a race long battle, these two, and they're still at it on lap eight. But again, the big bike power of Team Nichols prevails. What can Brian Gray do here? Is there an answer? You can just see from this race, the battle's going, oh, that was a bit deep. Dean Nichols went in very, very deep on the lick racing, and Brian Gray grabbed the place. So, a change in positions there that puts Brian Gray, to my reckoning, up to about eighth. Be confirmed at the end. All he's got to do is bring it home. Two more laps to do. Brian Gray and Jason Pitt. Very smart uh, teammate. Alan Founds not here this weekend. Nev Jones out of it. What a shame. He was having a great, great race. Nev Jones and Rob Child. They'll have to be thinking about 600 power next year, as indeed will many of them. There's Andy Peach and Ken Edwards. What a season they've had. They pulled that engine to bits. It had breather problems, but it seems to be going well. He's got a brand new engine sitting in the awning, which he was almost afraid to fit. I think that will come out to play at Knock Hill. But Andy Peach, another one of those top-line riders who's moved to 600cc power, getting it sorted out. It's a big transition. Rob Biggs then, Jerome Schmitz, another 600 mover. Immaculately turned out outfit. Matt McClure and AD Hope on their big Yamaha. And these two 600s really at it. Rob Biggs is going in, but flicks it through at the chicane. Through he goes, Andy Peach. 
comes back at him underneath. So that's a typical move where if you go in hot, you go a little bit wide. So roll reversal and then back again. Status quo. Business resumed. On the final lap, race leaders Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark building up a huge lead here. 15 seconds, you can see the gap on the final lap ahead of Phil Bell and Stuart Ramsey. So it's two 1,000cc bikes at the head of the pack, but this will be third win in a row for the Kershaw Clark boys. And the Molson Santander Salt Kawasaki looking really good. Out of the final bend, sprinting up the hill, no problems at all. Over the line they go. Victory number two here at Snetterton to round off what has started off as a brilliant season here. And round three we are. Phil Bell, this will place him firmly in second place in the championship. Phil Bell and Stuart Ramsey. And waiting for Todd Ellis and Charlie Richardson over the line, they go. And we have a red flag. Oh, bodywork. Bodywork rubbing. Well, you can understand the marshals being overly sensitive because uh, they're getting a bit paranoid about blow-ups and that could easily have been mistaken for a blow-up so but the red flag affected not the result certainly for the top three or four it's just that one or two further down the order might have missed out on a place Kershaw Bell Ellis there's your podium Stevens Horsepole Gilbert good effort from those guys we saw Rupert Archer and Tom Bryant fight all through the race and Brian Gray there behind Andy Peach Ken Edwards credited with 11th they got the better of Big Z Kirk in 13th Todd Ellis and Charlie Richardson really interesting reverse grid and that, that really proves something because even the 600s can come through yeah I mean we, we thought it was going to get beat up a bit but they do go off the line well and we got it off the line and it was a bit of carnage around the first lap and yeah we settled in nicely and just built up a gap behind us and didn't do out too stupid so looking forward to Cadwell next weekend and a bit more of a 600 circuit brilliant I mean quite a tough circuit and long long laps good races too weren't they they are around here you get enough of a group of you together it could be a good race uh, did spread out a bit today but we did all the hard work in the first couple of laps to get up the front and sort of just manage it from there really Phil Bell and Stuart Ramsey another brilliant result today I think you really enjoyed Snedder and the bike you seem to have got it handling better than the first race. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot better today. Very, uh, there was much, uh, still some some more tweaking to do, but we'll be ready for next weekend for Cadwell. Phil, are you enjoying being back in the championship? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Quick it's bike been, as well. Yeah, it's getting there, <laughs> it's getting there. Stuart, how's it round here for a passenger round Snetterton? Long flowing laps, but they're long, aren't they? Yeah, I've, I've always felt it, found it fairly difficult, but I've come here this weekend and something seems to have clicked. Phil's riding them brilliantly. Just everything seemed to come together and like like he says a few more things with the bike and we'll be on it so the kershaw clark machine rolls on and the points extended at the top of the table doesn't get much better than that does it no it's just a fantastic weekend paul two wins personal best lap time fantastic really happy Stuart, what about that reverse grid <laughs> did you go for it <laughs> yeah it's good fun that yeah it was a uh, got a bit hectic in the first couple of laps there gary bryan took off like a scalded cat took a bit catch him but yeah it's great fun couldn't happen to two nicer fellows. Look at that, 111 points against 70 of Phil Bell. Just four ahead of Todd Ellis. Stevens in there as well. That's where the battle is. Rupert Archer, Tom Bryant having a brilliant season. Good on them. They're level with Gary Horsepole. The 600 Cup, Ellis leads that. Not quite by a country mile, but he's doing well. Well, that's it from us at Snetterton. The next round is just next weekend. It's non-BSB, but we're at Cadwell Park for the Sidecar Revival. Stuff there from all over the decades, spanning five or six decades. I'm really looking forward to the nostalgia and four races from this championship on the programme. Don't miss it. We'll see you then.